Good morning, folks, and welcome to another episode of Get Outdoors with Hook Outdoors. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about fall turkey hunting here in the state of Kentucky. Uh, fall turkey hunting uh, kicked off this fall with the archery season that uh, started September 5th, runs through uh, January 18th of 2021. Uh, we are also where it's the month of October, and uh, well, it just runs out today, October 1st through the 18th, it, there is a cross season and then again from November 14th to December 31st uh, there's a uh, there's the next crossbow season uh, and then the fall shotgun season the first one is October 24th through the 30th and then the second shotgun season for the fall is uh, December 5th through uh, December 11th now there are uh, a few other rules with that uh, you know you can you um, have uh, four birds total, uh, no more than two birds uh, can be taken with a shotgun, uh, no more than one bird may have a beard length of three inches or longer, and no more than one bird may be taken per day. So we're going to dive right into that. Today my guest is Dwayne Burr. I've known him for years. He's an avid outdoorsman. Uh, he uh, manages a Zilpo campground among other things. Uh, he's a, a great turkey hunter and uh, he does doesn't care to shoot him. He 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 he's a good deer hunter. He's just a real good woods guy. And uh, I'm going to uh, let him kindly uh, uh, lead this conversation today as we uh, talk about this fall turkey hunting. Um, Dwayne, uh, in the fall, I guess to start it off with, uh, what are some things that you're uh, going to be looking for whenever you're uh, first starting to uh, uh, get ready for the uh, turkey season? Uh, Dan, one of the first things that uh, that we do is you've got to put in the time to scout for your turkeys. Mm -hmm. uh, there's several different ways to do that. A lot of guys, if you're a, an avid archery hunter for, for, for deer, uh, you're going to see your turkey moving through from time to time. And anybody that's ever tried to draw, draw on a deer know that it's uh, can be quite difficult. Uh, Fred Barry, which is a personal uh, hero of mine, uh, once said that uh, if a turkey could smell like a deer that you'd probably never kill one and I believe that's true. <laughs> yeah. um, one of the first things with scouting is, is to know your birds. Um, you can't kill what's not there. You need to know that, that you have birds in your area uh, and scout time just equals time in the woods. Uh, walking your log roads, uh, looking for droppings, looking for scratchings, uh, look for dusting spots. Um, you can also look for tracks in the, in the wet areas. Um, to, it gives you an idea that you have your birds in the in that area. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I like to do is walk the oak flats. Uh, again, if there's turkey in the area, uh, it will look like a bunch of people went through there with rakes. They'd just be mm -hmm. leaves overturned everywhere mm -hmm. because they're looking for the grubs, they're looking for the acorns, uh, they're looking for things that they can eat on. Uh, one of the things that I like to do, especially if you are lucky enough to be able to hunt in a field or a pasture, uh, you should always look for uh, feathers, again for more droppings uh, and if you're in a field with cattle look for the cow pies uh, the cow <laughs> pies will be rolled over they'll sure. go up and scratch at them they'll roll them over turn them over uh, they'll pick corn out of them they'll uh, they'll eat the worms that are, that are under them and they'll also dig through and pick out insects so it's a real good indicator that uh, that you have turkey in there and the more those pies are turned over uh, it's an indication of how big your flock is and how many birds that you may have in that general area but uh, again, look for the soft spots, the places that are a little bit muddy, look for your tracks. Uh, the signs are there. Now, yeah. if uh, you were just looking at a, a topo map, say it's an area that you had never been to before, and you're just looking at a topo map, where where are you going to start your scouting? Are you going to, uh, uh, elevation-wise and just location-wise, uh, are you going to look for more flat areas? Are you going to be down in the hollows? Uh, you know, where, where are you going to at least start your, your, your scouting process? If I'm looking at the topo maps, again, one of the things I'm going to look for is kind of look for the flats, especially if it, if it looks like it's going to hold oak trees. Uh, I'll look for uh, creek bottoms. I'll look for areas that have ponds. Uh, you know, everything needs water. Those mm -hmm. have a tendency to uh, everything gravitates towards towards the water. And again, those are, are areas that's going to give indications of tracks and, and a lot of signs. So those are places that I would start off at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess the uh, uh, the the next uh, the next thing as far as a food source, uh, what do turkeys tend to 
look for more than anything you mentioned grubs and that sort of thing but you know like deer and such are they big into like acorns and that sort of thing or are they more looking for bugs and scratching and stuff and that kind of and that kind of stuff well kind of all the above uh they do like the acorns uh they eat a lot of those um they will eat every insect that they can possibly catch and a lot of times you'll watch them going through that's why they go through and in the lines that they go through it's jumping grasshoppers they'll eat as many grasshoppers i think as they can possibly find mm-hmm. uh in the past with with birds that i've taken um i'll i like to, to go ahead and cut the, the gizzard open to see what kind of things that they've been been eating they'll a lot of dandelions uh, mm-hmm. at that time of year a lot of those in there mm-hmm. uh, and then different flower buds i've found them too so i think it's as long as it's attractive to their eye uh, that they'll go ahead and eat it but they are big big on the, on the insects and big on the on the acres okay 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 um as far as um i guess like um you know are, are you uh, are you looking for hens first or you just try to find the gobblers right off the bat or uh, are you looking for one gender or the other or does that really play a part of it well, our fall turkey season here will let us hunt both male and female. So uh, I know a lot of guys don't really like to hunt the hens. Some of the, some of the uh, stores that I've, I've, I've seen uh, on one of the Facebook pages that I belong to for Kentucky hunting for, uh, for turkey, uh, it seems like some of the population may be down in some of the areas in the state. But as long as the biologists are saying that, you know, our numbers are up, uh, then I continue to hunt the, according to what they say. Uh, I go by their their expertise, not so much by mine. But yeah, you can. Uh, you're normally going to find your bigger flocks or, or, or hens, uh, and you'll find bachelor groups. A lot of times, we'll find four or five toms, or a couple toms and a couple jays together. And I'm just basically looking for the, you know whatever I can find to begin with to just know where to set up and how the, to, to pattern those birds. Okay, I guess that leads me to my next question as far as the setup goes. Um, you know, I guess it'd be a multi-part question. I guess the first one would be, uh, say you've found them on the flat you're looking for. Uh, first question would be where you know, on that flat, I mean, where are you looking to set up? Uh, or do you prefer using a blind or are you just going to camo up and lean up against a tree? Uh, you know, that kind of thing. What, what is your, I guess, preferred way or your most uh, 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 successful way of setting up that is uh, that is uh, uh, that you choose to do there's a, a couple of different ways to hunt fall turkey and one of the most popular is is to find a flock bust that flock up and then set down in an area that you have you know cover around you and you don't have to be in a blind just back up against a good sized tree if you've got full camouflage I'm talking about face hands everything and begin to call and the call that they use is what's called a key key run mm-hmm. and a key key run is kind of a whistle you can actually do it with your voice you can uh, you don't really need a call to do that and that is the call of a lost bird and a lot of times it's a younger bird and that will get your dominant herd hen uh, to start calling and then eventually it will call all those birds back in what you need to do though this kind of hunting is make sure that you can see in every direction because you just don't know which way these turkeys are going to come from like i said you've busted off the flock they went all different directions so they couldn't come in from any different direction but i want to go back to the scouting one of the ways that my son and i like to hunt the best is putting our time in we know the birds routes most of the birds and a lot of the birds not all of them but a lot of birds you can pinpoint them to the very minute a lot of times every day going by the same tree or going by the same fence opening uh, and uh, you can set up in them areas again full camouflage you can use blinds we'll use blinds a lot of times if it's raining or we set them up just so we can go out if it's raining because turkeys are going to do turkey things even on rainy days mm-hmm. and just sit and wait for them birds to come in you can call uh, soft calls to, you can use uh, yelps for for hens uh, and, and what you do is a, a series of yelps is about 12 to 15 yelps followed by a series of soft purrs if you're looking for the toms or the jakes you can also call them in the fall but what we do with them is we'll cut those yelps down to two or three we will make them a lot slower not the cadence slow the cadence down and follow with a few aggressive purrs and a lot of times you can get the birds to respond to that mm-hmm. uh, do you use decoys I do use decoys. I have used decoys in the fall if I know where the birds are. And I just use that 
primarily to calm the birds down. Mm -hmm. It takes their attention off me. Another thing that I like to do, and a lot of people don't think about this, and it took me a couple of years to turkey hunt to, to, to really put this together, but I will try to sit down. If I know the birds are roosted, I'm going out in the early morning, mm -hmm. they're roosted in a particular area, I will try to sit with the wind to my back. Mm -hmm. And the reason is that they like to take off into the wind. It's easier for them. They're large birds. They sure. fly like a sparrow, don't get me wrong. But right. you know, they, anything that they can have in their advantage, they'll use. And I know if you turkey hunt or deer hunt, that's completely different. You always like the wind in your face. But set up with the wind to your back, which puts it in their face, and a lot of times they'll fly right down to you. Okay. Uh, I guess that's, uh, you mentioned uh, the morning there. I guess that would be another part of my setup question. And I guess that's, uh, and I guess it goes back to even, even what you've discovered with your scouting. Uh, do you find that there's a certain time of day that, turkey hunting is just better is it an early morning is it a midday is it a late evening uh you know or, or does it all just depends on the pattern you find when you're scouting it, that's what it boils down to dan if you put your time in and you know your birds now i'm going to say you know i've went into several places before just completely cold uh, it may be mid-morning, mid-afternoon. It doesn't really matter. The, the birds move all day long. Mm -hmm. um, and the whole thing is, is if you if you know your turkeys very well or you know turkeys at all, like I said, they're going to do turkey things even on rainy days. And if I see a bird out uh, when it's raining, uh, I'm pretty much guaranteed that it's going to rain all day because they're out in that field and they're just, they're just going to go ahead and eat. They're a pretty good barometer. They're pretty much, you know, let you know how the weather works. But I, I, I have found that... Uh, you can kill turkeys just about from, you know, for the first legal light all the way till just before fly up. And sometimes uh, fly up will be just a few minutes before dark as much to, you know, an hour before dark. It just mm -hmm. depends on those birds. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they have the uh, December shotgun season here and, you know, it can be pretty blistering cold. Does that change their pattern any if it gets really cold or, or does it, or like you say, is a turkey going to do turkey things here regardless? They pretty much are going to do uh, their thing every day. Mm -hmm. um, what you're going to concentrate on uh, is, is if you've got a good food source, you know, by that time, a lot of your acorns are gone. Uh, a lot of the, the cow patties are, are froze. They can't roll them over anymore. Uh, so they're going to be on their feet constantly looking for food and, and just if you can set up in an area with lots of scratches, uh, lots of scratch areas uh, that, that are coming through on a pretty regular basis, you're going to find your turkeys. Um, it can be a lot harder when it's cold. Uh, it's, for anybody, it's harder for us to set still yeah. like that, but, uh, but they'll still be out. They'll still be doing their thing. Okay. You know, and I guess this goes along with your, your camo up question and everything. I've always heard turkeys have excellent vision, and, and I guess that's the reason for the camo up. But, I, I mean, that is true. I mean, they can they can, they have excellent vision, don't they? Oh, the, yeah. They, they I would compare it to an eagle's uh, eyes. I mean, they're just uh, – if, if they look for movement like anything else in the woods, but mm -hmm. uh, they, uh, you know, when, I, when I've got a bird within uh, 30 yards, I try really hard not to uh, open my eyes real wide. I try, I start squinting and everything because I'm just afraid they're going to see that. They, they can detect <laughs> movement so well uh, that it's just unreal. And their, their ears, I mean, you can call a bird that's 300 yards away. And he'll walk within a foot of where you're sitting if you don't right. shoot him. I mean, they're just they're they're that that good. So, given you know their 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 quality of vision and their hearing and such and all like that, and you mentioned earlier talking uh, with hunting with the wind at your back, um, and this is just kind of something I run through my head. Do you think with the wind blowing? Uh, and just kind of breezy and leaves and just activity in the woods. Uh, is that something you can use to your advantage as a turkey hunter that it maybe distracts them a little bit to where they're not focusing in on, on you sitting over that tree? Yeah, um, a lot of times when it's really breezy, really windy days, you'll find uh, the turkeys in the open fields mm -hmm. um, with all the branches that are moving, okay. with all the leaves that are rattling, with yeah. all the different sounds. They can't pinpoint where danger's coming from. So they feel safer uh -huh. out in the middle of those fields because okay. they can see what's coming okay. and it gives them a chance to escape before something can get too close to them. So okay. that's one of the places they'll go. If I can't find them on the open fields, then I start going for the deepest ravines I can find in the area that I'm hunting because they'll go down in there sometimes just to get a break from the wind. So. Okay. That's the way that I like to hunt them when I'm when, on the windy days. Okay, so now we've talked about location, we've talked about setup, and you know we've talked about 
you know, the characteristics of, uh, of a turkey to a point. Um, you know, but the main thing of it is, you know, this whole thing, you know, you're trying to kill a turkey. So, you know, uh, um, can you uh, kind of enlighten us on the, the different, like, uh, you know, shells versus arrows and, and that kind of thing as far as what you use? Yeah, um, you talked about earlier in the broadcast that uh, you can, there's three different uh, ways of hunting here. Um, in the fall, we can hunt with archery equipment, which is a traditional bow or compound bow. So uh, you can hunt just about day for day with the with the deer season. Uh, and, uh, you know, the broadheads that you would use for your, your deer will, will take a turkey uh, if you're lucky enough to draw on one. Because, again, <laughs> they're, they're sight. I don't care if you're 20 foot in the tree. Uh, you're going to have, especially if you have more than one set of eyes, you're going to have one bird start putting and you're going to get busted. Mm -hmm. um, they have a crossbow season, which uh, is, it, to me, it's very much like the shotgun season. Uh, you know, I'll set up and, and, and get back into an area that I can blend into fairly well. Mm -hmm. And then the shotgun seasons that we have, you know, I, I hunt with the same uh, shotgun and the same shells, uh, the same turkey loads that I would hunt in the spring. Mm -hmm. Turkeys are tough. If you've ever shot them, I, you, can, you can roll them and they'll get up and take off. I uh, had an incident a couple years ago. We caught a couple toms in and... and shot one and rolled it and wind up having to shoot it again because they are so tough their feathers are so thick that uh, mm -hmm. you know, unless you're using a good turkey load yeah uh, it's just going to bounce off of them so uh, you owe it to the bird to make sure that you know you're using the proper loads and proper weapons uh, and and them. and as far as the shotgun and the load goes what uh, what are you going to be using i normally carry uh, I carry a 12 gauge most of the time. Uh, my son carries a 20 gauge. They're actually got four tens out now that that are making 30 and 40 yard shots with special mm. chokes and special special right. rounds. Sure. Uh, but I normally shoot a number five or number six shot turkey loads, a three inch magnum, right. uh, is my my preferred choice. Okay. All right. Well, we've talked about all that, and you know, I'm curious uh, if there's much difference between the uh, fall season. You you've discussed and the spring season i know it's a while away and we'll we'll get into that show sometime after the first of the year but just if you just want to touch on a couple of things on the, maybe some of the bigger differences between hunting turkeys in the fall and hunting them in the spring Dan, one of the things that I love about turkey hunting the most is the vocalization. It's the interaction with the bird in the spring. There's nothing like watching uh, the, the sunrise and sitting out there and calling a bird and have him respond to you. And that big shock and thunder and gobble comes back at you. It really makes it exciting. And a lot of people look at fall turkey season as kind of boring because you don't have that inter interaction. But I promise you that the birds are very vocal. They're... Uh, they, they like to talk and they talk to each other all the time they, mm -hmm. they use a series of purrs they use a series of clucks and putts and they use a series of of yelps but one of the things that you can do you can actually call turkeys in the fall and not just the kiki run which is the most popular one but again i've already touched on the fact that you can yelp to the birds but one of the things that you can use in the fall that's a little safer to use in the spring is you can use a gobble call. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of times in the spring, if you use that gobble call, you have a tendency to draw unwanted attention to yourself and you may have a hunter coming into your area <laughs> or actually shooting at you because some yeah. people aren't really uh, that cautious and they'll shoot at movement instead of seeing and shooting at what their, their, their intended target is supposed to be. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of difference in the two. Um, I, I find the fall hunting as, a, as challenging as I do the spring hunting and I enjoy it just as much and if you haven't done any fall hunting uh, you owe it to yourself to get out and spend a little bit of time in the woods uh, and you'll find out that the birds are very vocal I hear gobbles in the fall I hear gobbles through the winter I hear gobbles all year long when you're in the woods uh, it's not just a springtime thing and you will have some birds that will come in if they react to your calls that will actually go into full strut even in November and December and January so it's not just something that happens in April now we have good numbers of turkeys here. Uh, I don't have like an exact figure, but you know, um, from discussions with local fish and wildlife people, you know, we have good numbers here, and that's one of the reasons. You know, they have expanded the season to a, a, a fall season, which we didn't used to have. And one thing we did miss, and I don't exactly know the regulation on that, but where does the black powder hunting come in with all this? I mean, is, is there a certain time of year like for this fall or is it kind of covered under the archery season as far as uh black powder season for for turkey as, as far as the actual black powder there's not really a season for turkey 
if you're using a projectile for deer, but they do make black powder shotguns that you can okay. use during these shotgun seasons, okay. as okay. well as springtime. So you can use those uh, at, at the same times that you do the, the actual shotgun seasons late mm -hmm. in the year. All right. Well, awesome. Well, folks, we've covered the basics of your uh, scouting tips and your location, your setup, what kind of calls tend to work better than others. Uh, you know, all I can tell you uh, is uh, one piece of advice is be sure you check your uh, state and local regulations. You know, these uh, hunting guides are pretty easy to come up with. Uh, Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife has a website even. And, you know, just make sure you're legal and right and everything before you hit the woods uh be conscious of where you're at you know make sure of what you're shooting at before you shoot and and you know and just tune in uh we'll do another show here a little bit later uh we'll probably go into deer hunting we're going to talk some fall musky fishing here before too long and as always folks just uh get outdoors with hook outdoors